Balloon 1-2, Introduction to Balloon Flight Training In the world of ballooning, the role of a certificated flight instructor, as commonly seen in other aviation sectors, is notably absent. Instead, this responsibility is shouldered by commercially rated balloon pilots who choose to instruct and adhere to the provisions outlined in 14 CFR Part 61, specifically tailored for commercial pilot privileges and limitations for a balloon. When we refer to a flight instructor in this context, we are essentially talking about a commercial balloon pilot providing instruction. The Federal Aviation Administration places full responsibility for student training on these authorized flight instructors. Their primary duty is to impart comprehensive knowledge and skills necessary for a student pilot to operate safely and competently within the national airspace system. This training encompasses airmanship skills, pilot judgment and decision making, and instilling good operating practices. Flight instructors in this domain utilize a teaching methodology rooted in the building block method. This progressive approach ensures that students move from the known to the unknown, with each new maneuver building upon previously learned principles. Correct techniques and procedures are emphasized from the outset, fostering the development of proper flying habit patterns. Beyond the mechanical aspects of maneuvers, a flight instructor serves as a role model for aspiring balloon pilots. The student observes and seeks to emulate the flying habits of their instructor during various flight operations, consciously or subconsciously attempting to embody the same level of proficiency. Choosing the right flight instructor is a pivotal aspect of a pilot training program. The quality of ground and flight instruction significantly influences the success of a student pilot. It's imperative for students to exercise discernment in selecting an instructor, recognizing that not all instructors are equal in terms of expertise and adherence to standards. Flight training in the United States is facilitated through various channels, including Federal Aviation Administration-approved pilot schools, non-certificated flying schools, and independent flight instructors. While Part 141 balloon training programs exist, the primary conduit for balloon flight training involves certificated commercial balloon pilots who are authorized to instruct under 14 CFR Section 61133A22. A. Federal Aviation Administration approved schools operating under 14 CFR Part 141 stand out due to their voluntary adherence to stringent requirements covering personnel, equipment, maintenance, and facilities. They follow an established curriculum with an approved training course outline, providing a structured and regulated environment for flight training. When it comes to flying, the Federal Aviation Administration has these Practical Test Standards, or PTS, that set the bar for pilot certificates and ratings. Basically, they're like these rigorous tests that Federal Aviation Administration and designated examiners use to evaluate how well pilots know their stuff and handle different situations. It's all spelled out in 14 CFR Part 61, which lays out what pilots need to show in terms of knowledge and skills. Now, the PTS book is a testing document, not a training syllabus. So during training, flight instructors like me are responsible for getting pilot applicants up to snuff on all these standards. We have to make sure our students can nail every task and maneuver to meet these acceptable standards set by the Federal Aviation Administration. You can't just wing it, you've got to know your stuff. For those flying lighter-than-air aircraft, the PTS documents to check out are FAAS 88117 for private pilot and FAAS 808118 for commercial pilot. You can either download them from the Federal Aviation Administration website or grab printed copies from the government printing office. Talking about safety practices, there's a bunch to keep in mind for every flight. Collision avoidance is a big one. You've got to be on the lookout for potential mid-air collisions. There's this concept called see and avoid, where pilots have to keep a vigilant eye out at all times. Especially for balloon pilots, when you're flying close to the ground, you've got to be extra careful to avoid stuff like trees and power lines. It's all about using your eyes right and knowing their limitations. Then there's runway incursion avoidance, which is basically making sure you're not creating a hazard on the ground at an airport. Even though balloons might not be doing the traditional airport thing, if you find yourself needing airport space, you've got to be super aware of what's happening around you, even without a control tower. Now, checklists are like a pilot's best friend. Using them consistently is key. Whether it's pre-flight checks, dealing with emergencies, or packing up after a flight, having a checklist keeps you on point. Flight instructors make sure students get into the habit of using them because they're all about safety and making sure everything's covered. 
In the realm of flight training, establishing a clear understanding between the student and the flight instructor regarding control of the balloon is absolutely crucial. Before embarking on any dual training flight, it becomes the responsibility of the flight instructor to conduct a comprehensive briefing encompassing the procedural aspects of the exchange of flight controls. A highly recommended three-step process for this transfer of controls is as follows. Firstly, when the flight instructor intends for the student to assume control of the balloon, a simple verbal cue is employed. The instructor communicates, you have the flight controls. Promptly, the student acknowledges this transfer by stating, I have the flight controls. The process is then finalized as the flight instructor verbally confirms the shift in control, stating, you have the flight controls. This verbal exchange is further reinforced by both parties engaging in a visual check to confirm that the designated person indeed has control of the balloon. Ensuring a seamless transition when the student pilot desires to relinquish control back to the flight instructor, they follow the same prescribed procedure. The student remains on the controls until the flight instructor explicitly declares, I have the flight controls. This meticulous process eliminates any ambiguity regarding who is actively in control of the balloon at any given moment. By establishing and practicing this positive transfer of control, especially during the initial stages of training, a foundation is laid for the development of sound flying habits. The significance of clarity in communication and procedural adherence cannot be overstated in the realm of aviation, where precision and shared understanding are paramount. If you click like and subscribe and leave a comment, we will provide a coupon for a free PDF download one of nine ebooks. However, each individual can only download up to one out of nine ebooks for free.